My main objective when I was teaching the lesson comparing ratios, I really wanted the students to understand how to compare ratios. I wanted them to be able to know how to use the correct mathematical vocabulary, not simply by giving them a definition for ratio, but linking it to real world. And that's why I incorporated the kids when I was trying to teach them a ratio. Now we're gonna talk about ratio, okay. Please look at the groups you're standing in. How, did, how are you divided? By what? How did I divide you? Gender. By gender, boys and girls. How many girls are here? Five. How many boys? Five. Five. So what is the ratio of boys to girls? If the ratio of one lap is three minutes, what's the ratio of boys to girls? One, one. One, one. Interesting, David. How'd you come up with that? Because I would have thought maybe, who, who can read my mind? What do you think I would have thought? Five, five. Five, five. That's what I would have thought. But why did you say one, one? That's very interesting. Because you simplify it. Simplify it. Five divided by five equals one. Mm -hmm. And that's what you did in that problem. Very good. But I like that vocabulary word you're using, simplify. Interesting. We're going to talk a little bit more about it. Okay, now let's take a look at your shoes. Now, everybody just standing. You can get closer so you can see the shoes over here. Come over here. Come over here. Take a look at your shoes. Okay? I'm looking. I'm looking. Okay. The ratio I'm going to come up with here is how many black shoes to blue shoes? Some shoes have black and white. Some shoes have black and white. Do you want to count those? Yeah, they contain black but not blue. So. Okay, so let's count them because they don't contain blue. Yeah. Including yours? Oh, yeah, okay, fine. Include me. That would be great. Seven black, seven black, seven black shoes, shoes and, and two blue shoes. Okay, so what's the ratio of black shoes to blue shoes? Seven, seven over two. two. Listen to that word he's saying, seven over two. Is there another way to say it as well? One and three fourths. Okay, okay, oh. You're thinking it's a mixed number, instead okay. Of, of an and we're gonna talk fraction. about that. Instead of an improper fraction, hello, very good vocabulary words. Okay, now, with a ratio, I want you to leave it as improper. So he said seven over two, and over there with Ariel and Susan's problem, I said one, two, three. So what's another way that you could say, instead of saying seven over two, that you could say the shoes here? I'm just changing one vocabulary word. Listen carefully. Instead of saying seven over two, on that problem I said one, two, three. So how can I say this? I'm gonna change one vocabulary word. What word are you gonna change? instead of saying seven over two. Seven fourths. Seven. Two. Seven to two, okay. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Thank you, have a seat. Now we got our blood flowing. We can move around a little bit, get energized, and we can move on. Okay, so just to wrap up what you're saying, the shoes, David said seven over two. Is that a good way to write a ratio, you think? Is it acceptable? Yeah, it's acceptable. Very good. I kept saying seven, two, two. Okay. Now, what's the ratio here in the classroom? Teacher to students. How many teachers do you see in this classroom right now? One. To how many students? Nice job. Okay, and that's a ratio as well. Okay, I want you to please look at number two. I want you to discuss it. I want you to feel confident about this. And let's come up with solutions. Read it first on your own, and then get ready to discuss with your partners. Let me hear from Ashley real quick, because she started real quick, and then Nicholas can jump in. All right, we have to for Jill, because um, five, we start the right So five divided by 25 is Okay. Than I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. It's a little louder. When, which is greater than when we divided 
Okay. And what was the question being asked in that problem? We'll get to the water pail of No, pail of water first. Okay. But when I look at that, I see that three and one third is a smaller number. Yeah, so that's why we say less time. Which one would take the less time? Jill. 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 Okay. All right, but what are you thinking? <laughs> She's saying but. Am I, am I, uh... No, it's because, look, I'm thinking that Jill makes the first. Jill will get there in five minutes. Jill takes five steps, is that what you said? Five steps in, in 25 seconds. Well... So for every second, how many steps? Because I think you've got a unit right there. For every second... How many steps? For 25 seconds, okay. Go ahead, finish explaining what you're gonna say. Well, I thought that it was, um, you should go to my school. Oh, um, that would mean that, so probably this would probably be minutes, okay. or something bigger than this amount of time. Okay. So that would, mean, that would get okay, there in I see five of that amount of time. And um, Joe will get there in three and one third okay. of that amount of time. And you guys agree with with the method? Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, Jonathan, I'd like you to explain what you did. Okay. What I did was, and Joe will walk in twenty seconds, six steps, and Jack in five five steps every twenty five seconds. Um. It comes to the conclusion that when you multiply 25 times 2 equals 50, which then 50 equals 10, uh, 10 steps that Jack will walk. Okay, Jonathan, I'm going to interrupt real quick because you're, you're doing great, but I want you to show it, show the visual part of it. Because I want to see, what, how'd you come up with 50? What did you do? You, you made an assumption that... What happens if you write more, you, you take more steps? What are you doing? Show the class. Okay, Jack... Jack. Uh, Jack to walk every five steps, 25 seconds. Okay, so since Jack could walk every 25 seconds, you multiply 25 times 2 equals 50. Which then, since every 25 seconds equals five steps and 50, it equals 25, 225s, then it will be 10 steps. Okay. 10 steps. Okay. And Jill, Jill uh, walks three steps, three steps every 10 seconds. I'm curious. Let me ask you a question. You chose 50 here. Yes. 50 stands for what? 50 stands for two, for seconds. Okay, so write seconds there. Seconds. David, do you, do you want to make a suggestion? Do you think he should maybe see how Jill does in 50 seconds? Because he's breaking it down to 20 seconds, which is fantastic. He's coming up with a relationship. I'm gonna, I want to see what would happen. Can you try, instead of choosing 20 here, choose 50 seconds here too. I want to see what would happen. Let's test this out a little bit. Um, here? Yeah, let's see. Here, it's you increased it to 50 seconds, right? Yeah. What would happen if I increase Jill to 50 seconds? Tell me how many steps Jill would take in 50 seconds. Since in 40 seconds, Jill could take 12 steps. Um, 12 steps. And plus 10, 40 plus 10, equals 50. And since every 10 seconds, three steps, you add three, plus 12, and it equals 15. 
Very nice job. I like the way you did that. And it will be 15 steps, which Jill and Jack will only walk. Will, it will only walk. Jill will walk 15, and Jack in 50, in 50 seconds will walk uh, 10. Right. So 15, of course, is more than 10. So who's faster? Uh, Joe is faster because it's actually 15 steps he's taking every 50 seconds. And Jack is taking 10 steps every 50 seconds. Very nice job. I like what you did. I like it. it kind of sounded like he uh, combined unit rate with time. Why do you think he chose to increase the time for both of them? Why did he take that method, David? To make them That sounds really good. I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay, what did he make the same? When I'm looking at this, and um, I see fractions here written, and I see that he labeled things, which is so important in math. Got a label. I see here that he put 50 seconds, and let's see, who, who was this? Uh, that's Jack. That's Jack, okay. And how many steps did Jack do? Um, he did, um, in 50 seconds? In 50 seconds, he did 10 steps. Nice job. Okay. And I want you to compare it to Jill. And you said... Jill did 15, 15 steps in 50 seconds. Nice job. And then let's look at what David's saying. Um, Britt, do you see what he's saying? That he increased the time? Ashley, what did he increase the time to? And what operation did he take? What did he do to get there? He found the least common multiple. He found least common multiple. Wow. How do you find least common multiple? How do you do that? Um, you just multiply the bottom ones so they equal the same, which will be 15, mm -hmm. which is the least common denominator. Mm -hmm. And when you find that, you just multiply the top with the same, um, the same number. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. And that's what I see. I see that he's doing, but I like what you did here. You, you kind of like really linked it to real world. You're thinking, wow, 20 seconds to so 40 seconds. And then you combine unit rate. There's a lot of math going on here, Allie, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you guys did a really nice job on this. Well, actually, um, as an instructor, when, when I teach, I really want to know what individual needs a child has. And I can really tell when I put them in cooperative groups what areas they need help with. Okay. In order to um, pre-test a student, I use a variety of formats. Uh, sometimes, usually, before a new concept is presented, I will do uh, an informal assessment by observation, just simply asking questions. Or I'll do a written format, a pre-test. Or I'll even use technology and then assign a pre-test on the computer. Uh, and those are all different ways that I know what their individual needs are before starting a concept. And then as you go along through the weeks, you get to know your students uh, by the assessments that you give them. And you still can find out how to challenge them as well as identifying their weaknesses.